Okay, excellent. Okay, we'll call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone. Um, our uh, first, uh, Ray, do you want to take a roll call for us? Absolutely. Um, Tony Doan. Here. Uh, Quinn. I Present. I see you. <laughs> Corey. Thomas. I am here. Damon Jay. Oh, here. Thank you. Uh, John Napier. Michael Six. Um, Ken Brillet. Here. Dave Cocott. He'll be out today. Yeah. Matthew Campbell. Here. Kevin Marr. And Chris Seaman. I am here. Okay. That's seven. We have a quorum. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Ray. Anyone from the public that would like to be recognized? Okay. Excellent. Let's move on to um, agenda item number two, review and approve agenda. Looks like Mike Six is here now too, Ray. All right. Welcome, Mike. So if everyone's gotten a chance to look over the agenda, um, it's open for comment if we have any changes. If not, looking for a motion to approve. Move to approve the agenda as posted. Second. I second that. Okay, we have a motion from Ken and a second from Damon. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, aye. 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 All against, nay. Motion carries. <clears throat> Let's go to um, agenda item number three, review and approve the February 18th, 2021 summary minutes. Um, Ray was able to knock those out this morning. He's had a busy week. And so thank you for that, Ray. Apologize for that, those not being posted earlier. Yeah. Um, but staff has been incredibly packed in the last week. So he was able to get those done this morning. Is that something you want to pull up, Ray, and we can take a quick look at? Sure, I can do that. If yeah. Able. yeah, just take a second here. Oh, it's, it's, so we go stop share and then share and uh, here we are. You seeing them now? Uh, yes, we are. Okay, <laughs> okay, there's not a lot to them, so that's. <laughs> Sorry, you got the no, scroll. Okay. I'm just going to blow this up real quick on my side a little bit. Okay. I can do the same thing. There we go. Okay. After uh, a brief look over those, is there anyone that would like to make changes to the uh, minutes from the February 18th meeting? I see a spelling error in the significate oh, change report. I did. That's the second time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, Chris. I feel like we can always count on Chris. You know that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's our professor of the group. So <laughs> I, my father-in-law was a uh, in charge of like a print business. So his big thing was commas and spelling errors. Because as soon as you see one thing wrong, you look deeper. So right. <laughs> if you can make it look good on the surface, then digging uh, doesn't happen. Hey, I love it. <laughs> All right. So we'll make that change. Do we have a motion to approve with that change? I'll move to approve them with that change. Okay. Oh, I'll second that. 
Okay, so we have a motion from Chris and a second from Corey. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 All aye. against, nay. Okay, motion carries. Okay, so we're gonna jump to um, agenda item number four, which is review existing IFC state amendments, um, 5154A. And so I think we have a couple of sections left on that, unless anyone has something to add to their previous sections. And uh, once Ray gets that pulled up, we'll start that process. And I'll let Ray kind of go through that since he has a good handle on that uh, spreadsheet. Yeah, we, we are just about done with this end. Um, are you, are you seeing the spreadsheet now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of small, but, um, I think we can, well, maybe on mine, but I think that might be my screen view. Okay. So, uh, where we're at, we're just about there. We, I, let me see, find a chapter that maybe we haven't done. Um, ultimately what my goal was, um, I kind of touched on it briefly, um, at the last meeting is I'm really waiting for that CR 10, that, my CR 103, that permanent rulemaking that I made um, for those 105 changes to be posted on the ledge website. That way I can pull our OTS document and I'd like to present you guys with all the changes in code language and then we edit that. And the reason I wanna do that, and if, if you have any questions on the process, please stop me because it, it gets kind of, the ball rolls and it, the snowball gets bigger and bigger. But um, the reason that I would like to do that is that would take a lot of work off the tag as far as the proposals for state amendment changes. Um, if we work together, we can submit one proposal for all the changes that we wanna make to the state amendment instead of having each person submit their own proposal for their chapters that they are assigned. So that's kind of my goal. Um, it takes a little bit of the heavy lifting off of the tag and um, it only gives us one document to review instead of several documents to review if the tag's okay with that. I'll open it up to tag members to comment on that. Let, let me know what they think. I just heard that it was easier for us. So I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's, it's, it's significate easier for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so Ray, yeah. Ray, if there's any like financial impact how is that noted in each individual change um I, I was just hoping that you guys would just give me this section number and i'm just going to put it in another cell okay for that number. and then it's basically just a yes or no at this point um so that'll uh that'll make it easier okay um it looks like dave uh dave sent me an email it looks like the uh chapter 82 for the wooey code is the only thing we have left Oh, excellent. Um, unless somebody has any uh, any uh, significant change. Um, oh, I was asked to get you guys books. I looked into that. Um, I talked with Ken too. It, those the significant uh, change books for the IFC is not out yet. Oh, is that okay. true, Ken? That we were saying yesterday. Yeah, the last I saw, they said June. So that kind of. <laughs> And I am on an ICC website again, just double checking. Yeah, and like, if you could I just ordered one in November, and that, but then they told me February, and so I called them again the other day. Yeah, I saw the website says June, and they they said they hope to get me one by March. But yeah, it's uh, I've got the building code one, but yeah, the fire code one is uh, apparently out of print. So. Okay, so my so that that would be uh, if you could just go through the your chapters um, assigned and just look at the black bars on the in the code book and if it if it looks like there's going to be a, a financial impact to the builder just put a yes by it and give me just the section number and a yes and then I'm going to put those in the spreadsheet um, and you can give me those through email or uh, or, or however. And I'm more than willing to talk with anybody. If, if anybody needs help on a chapter, let me know. I'll, I will. I don't mind taking on a couple chapters as well. I would uh, like to get through that. Go ahead, Ken. Does I just want to make sure? Does everybody have access to the the IFC 2018 Group A public comments that were done? Because that might help since we don't have the 
significant changes. So that's just um, a listing of all the code change proposals and the committee actions and the justifications that they normally use that information to create the significant changes. And that's on the ICC website, right? Yeah. I just, uh, if you forward it to me, I'll forward it to the tag so everybody has access to that. Okay. I will post the link in the chat. I will try to do that right now. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually just a PDF, so. Uh, Ray, this is Corey. So uh, on the, the building code uh, tag, uh, they sent us a, like a separate spreadsheet to fill out. I don't know if that was what you wanted to do because, or somehow jam them into this, this existing because obviously the, the changes in the 21 code are different than the amendments in the 18 code. So that was just okay. Yeah, we, I don't know. I will. I will get with Stoyan. I did not see that uh, spreadsheet. I want to keep everything pretty consistent between the IBC yeah, and the I. I think that works pretty well. So easier than trying. I will to, get with to try to jam it into this one. I think. Yep, that's that sounds good to me. I didn't realize there was one out there, so I will. Like I said, I want to keep everything consistent across the board. So I will get with him and I will uh, I will send something out or yeah, we'll, he, we'll get he sent us that yesterday. So okay, perfect. I will get that. Thank you for sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so I do, and let me I was speaking on that. I, let me pull up a uh, Dave Cocott's email that he sent me. Uh, make sure we aren't missing something. Um, says he's in a mediation meeting says I have gone over my chapters in regards to the significant changes and we'll be getting those sent out to you for chapters four and eight I need to coordinate with others for 11 which is a big one 33 and 82 I would recommend that we look let's see what he says Oop, I think. he says I would recommend that we look to see what the 2024 version of chapter 39 it looks like as the state basically created it, the 2024 cleans up the number of items, cleans up a number of items and does not appear to have any significant issues. Um, 39 is the marijuana code. Um, so it's kind of looks like the same for 82 in the WUI. It looks, it looks like, uh, looks like here are some minor changes, but nothing real significant when you take the state changes into account. Says, I hope the mediation doesn't take long. I will join the tag when I can. So it just sounds like he's got some work he still wants to hand in to me, which doesn't seem like it's gonna be too big. Okay. So that's what we have for the WUI. Um, shoot, I guess this is probably gonna be a, until I get that, uh, that OTS paperwork in and make that proposal, um, this is gonna probably be a short meeting. Um, a lot of work on my end to get, for the next meeting, but we, I think we're, we're looking good. Excellent. Um, Does anybody have any comments on anything we made changes to so far or want to look at something? Um, as far as the, the, oh, never mind. But, I was jumping ahead there. Sorry, Ray. No, no problem. We want to begin working through the cost impacts, or is that are you saying that's going to take place on another spreadsheet? It sounds like it's going to take place on another spreadsheet to stay consistent with the IBC. We do have that as a um, agenda item today for the yeah. for the next. Yeah, yeah, we. So can, do you want to go Absolutely. over anything that anyone has today just to, to get it rolling or do we want to wait? I can put it in this cell. I can put it in this spreadsheet and transfer it over when I get a copy of that other one. Okay. If we, if we want to go over some things today. Okay. Is there anything further on agenda item number four reviewed the existing ISD amendments we've been working on? Any discussion from the group? Hey, Ray or Tony, this is Quinn here. Um, 
I'm looking into it, but it's on the Wobbles agenda to discuss section 507.3. Um, I'll, I'll read to you the agenda that they have uh, on their list to talk about next week. Uh, IFC, uh, IWUIC reference to sub for fire resistive construction says CIFC chapter 507.3 WAC allows WUI chapter five as alternative construction material methods if quote adequate, reliable and quote fire service services not available. Items included that are usually regulated by building code. Uh, the question was put similar language into WSBC slash WSRC. So I want to get more information on what um, their issue was about it, but just to be aware that it's on their radar, radar that 507.3 uh, seems to be an issue. Okay. Thank you, Quinn. Appreciate that. But is that, 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 that. That's in the model code you said? No, it's the WAC. Oh, they're, so. they're, they're questioning the WAC. Okay. Okay. When's that meeting, Quinn? It'll be on March 8th. Okay, thank you. Um, this is Nig. I just have a question. If we are not on the tag, is it still possible to get a copy of the spreadsheet? Yes, absolutely. How do I insert my name into that list? <laughs> do you do you have my, this is great shipping staff. Do you have my email from the website? Um I, I was just saying, you, you, where would I find it? It's just under contacts under our, our state website. Um, oh, I can find that. The, then. It's uh, my contact, Ray Shipman. Um, and you, if you just email me that you'd like a copy of it, I would be more than happy to send it to you. Cool. Thank you. I'll also, um, when we get, I haven't done it lately because I've been updating it regularly. I try to post it for the next meeting so people can just pull it up pull it up and see it um, as far as documents for the next meeting. Great. So that's State Building Code Council website. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Meg. Just for the record, who are you representing today? Um, I used to work for a jurisdiction. I, I used to work for City of Everett, actually oh, okay. City of Seattle. <laughs> and so, but now I, I'm uh, back in architecture. However, I'm finding that people really need, um, you know, resources to help them jump through the hoops to get a permit quickly. And so um, as an architect, I like to provide them with the same type of uh, information that I used to provide, provide behind the counter. And actually, um, at Ken, uh, uh, for City of Tacoma, I don't know if you remember me, Quinn, when I um, was there for uh, Fire Escape. So it's just, it's just beneficial to, I think, to have people, advocates in the community that uh, can spread the word. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Meg. Appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. And Meg, you're, uh, um, just because you're not on the tag doesn't uh, 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 preclude you from uh, uh, submitting submittals or code change proposals or anything like that. Anybody, anybody can submit code change proposals or uh, voice in comments on anything we talk about in these meetings. These are all public meetings. Excellent. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other discussion on agenda item number four? All right. Oh, Matt, do you have something? Oh, I was, I just sent my list to Ray. I was going to share as, oh. as far as it is identifying some cost impacts. Oh, okay. It, Let's, I'm just going to move on to um, number five. Then, I think that's what the, that agenda item is. I'm going so, to close out. So let's go to agenda item five, which is the significant changes report. And I believe that's, that's where we're supposed to be addressing that. Is that correct, Ray? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Sorry. So, and, Back up. With that, we'll okay. open it up to the group. And Matt, if you want to start us off, that'd be great. Oh, Matt, I, uh, you said you sent me. Okay. Is it uh, an Excel workbook and an attachment? Okay. The bright one. <laughs> I, I did highlight the sections that I was assigned. 
Okay. Um, okay, I see I got you up here now. And um, I'm going to try something here. Let me know if it works or not. Um, I'm trying to bring both in. Well, that didn't work. Are you seeing both Excel spreadsheets right now on the screen? We did just a second ago. Okay. We're seeing are you, are you, two spreadsheets. Are you seeing them both now? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So, uh, let's see here. I'm I so just, sorry, you guys. I, I feel like I'm not, I, I feel like I'm not all here today. I've just been going running like crazy like this you're week. Okay. You're okay, right? We're doing yeah. good. Um, and I didn't even I didn't mean that this needs to be addressed now. I just want to get it to you so you know it was there. So okay. you did let you know it was there if we wanted to. I but if this is gonna be a separate spreadsheet, that's good too. Um, so I just have it, I added a column on fiscal impact with my best understanding of, and, and I think some of these, like say I've got uh, chapter 11, chapter 33 and chapter 50. Chapter 33, I would definitely appreciate. Um, I think the, the folks that use this in the field for, for places under construction have a better sense of the impact, but I just made my best guess. Okay. Yeah, I think what I can do, uh, Tony, for since this is kind of like, th this was kind of sparked on everybody the last meeting, and then we're kind of like bringing it up this meeting. I can take what we have here for the, uh, and then have people email me and get that new spreadsheet, and we can actually really start diving in deeper for the fiscal stuff on the next meeting. And I'll hopefully have that also that, um, that proposal, that code language proposal done. Okay, that, that sounds good. Why don't we why don't we do that? Maybe in the email to the tag that has the, the PDF link um, for ICC, we can just include this spreadsheet and then we can really just hit it hard next uh, next Thursday if that's okay with everyone. It will be a it will be a busy the next week's uh, tag meeting if we have that together, it will be a it may be a little longer than our normal tag meetings. With all the work that we'll be going through. I'll leave it open for discussion on, on how people feel about that, but I, that's what I'm hearing is that it's probably best to have this sent out to everyone and then tackle it based on the spreadsheet instead of doing this now. I think that's a good idea. I think that uh, uh, will make beef you know less confusing that way and if we have to go, you know, the full four hours, that I'm up for it. So, yep. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, I, I have the my. I've gone through chapter nine, and I but I haven't uh, put it in any type of electronic format yet. So I'm I'm ready to enter into the spreadsheet when we receive that. Yes. Excellent. Okay. With that, I, I think. Um, I don't think we need to make a motion. We'll just add it to the to the agenda for next time and table it for today. Are we good with that, Ray? Uh, I'm good with that. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So um, as, so just from direction, I'm going to need to as staff, I will send out the the spreadsheet uh, similar to the one the IBC is looking at, along with the link that Ken sent me um, to address this item number. What are we on number five? Right now? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's, I'm just making my notes so I don't forget anything. Okay. Uh, okay. Any any discussion, questions, comments on uh, significant changes report? Okay. With that, we'll go to number six, which is other business. We'll open it up for anyone who'd like to bring up other business. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Ken, go ahead. Uh, I have some other business as well, but Ken, you go first. So I got this uh, email yesterday from Micah Chappelle, um, Seattle's technical code program person. And I don't know if Corey, you heard this or anybody else regarding um, there's a proposal going to the tag that would change the height 
of buildings that currently it says it's 60 feet for buildings built under um, our occupancies built under 13 R and that's the scope of 13 R and reducing it down to 30 feet. And I asked to see the justification for it before I could comment on it. But I was just wondering if anybody else heard a rumor that somebody, some jurisdiction, somebody was proposing okay, well, a change. That is one of the significant changes that has already been adopted by the 2021 code. So what they have done, they've limited the height for 13R systems. So right now, a lot of the 13R systems are, you know, these buildings are built uh, four stories high with wood frame, but they're built, you know, on two story like concrete parking garages. And what, uh, what the code has been allowing is that you could put the, you know, the full 13 in the parking garage, and then you could still use 13R from, you know, above that. So basically you're using 13R in a six story building. So that is one of the significant changes that is going to be on my report is that it is limiting 13R systems to four stories regardless of the construction. So, so that's different. Yeah. yeah so, so that's different than the 30 feet he was talking about, right? Well, 30 feet is, is four stories, I guess. I think that's where it's coming from. So is it in the IBC now, the 2021? Yep. I just looked at that. I didn't see you it. Me to, yeah. I can, I can, I can give you the exact code section. You would you like me to pull that up and put it on the screen? Yeah. It's 903.3.1. Point two. Oh, so it's in. It's not in Chapter Five of the Building Code. No, this is in the sprinkler section, Chapter Nine. Okay, so if that if that's the question as far as use of thirteen R systems. Yeah, yeah. So I was going back to the tables in the Building Code for allowable height. I don't know anything about that. Okay, because that's where I, mean, I thought I have the significant changes uh, building code here. If if there's something in chapter five, I can look it up real quick. Are we talking the 2021 code? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a mess. I'm reading it now. That's just uh, I would expect that we propose something better. <laughs> Is this okay? I'm, I'm trying to pull it up for everybody to see. Is this yeah. IFC, IBC? IFC or IBC nine zero three three one two. It may take a second for me to pull it up. Yeah. It, you know, maybe this may be a change for some jurisdictions. This certainly in Renton, we would not have allowed this. Any, <clears throat> we were requiring full 13 in those types of buildings anyway. But, oh, okay. Yeah, me too, Corey. You know, That's and really weird. in a lot of those, you know, the main difference is if it has an attic space or not. You know, as far as the coverage in the rooms and the hallways and stuff, 13 and 13R in residential isn't, isn't much different, really. Um, I apologize for asking one more time. What section is it? 90... 903312. 903. And this is also on um, Wobble's uh, agenda to talk about as well, but it sounds like Wobble. Uh, is saying let's not adopt this part and like Chris is saying uh, change you know change the wording or something yeah and this is not in the tables it's half the table um, it's uh, yeah what page my own yeah I didn't see it in the building code tables that's why I was confused and I'm trying to find out where that code change went in. There it is right there, yeah. So the change there <clears throat> is that uh, now the measurement is from grade plane, not, you know, from the podium level, so. And there's the 30 feet, yeah. Yeah, that's weird. It it's like they wrote it to say, if you need a standpipe, it can't be 13R. <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. 
again, uh, I'm not sure how much of an impact it really is going to have. The, 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 the buildings that it's going to impact is buildings that have attic space because obviously the, the main difference between 13 and 13R in our occupancies is whether the attic is sprinkled or not. And a lot of these, they have flat roofs and don't have attic space. So I'm not sure that it really is that big of an impact. Safety wise, but I think this. Well, cost wise, if, that's what yeah. we're talking about. Oh no, but impact. yeah, it, but if you have a, this is gonna kill the four story apartment building using a 13 R system. Again, there's not much difference between the two requirements in 13 versus 13 R for our occupancies. Yeah, but I, you know, if somebody wants to build an attic that's not shoved full of insulation um, and they want to use a standard truss. Yeah, but again, a lot of those because of the height, the, you know, the height restrictions, a lot of them don't have, uh, don't have attic spaces. Yeah. But I mean, I would want to give them the option. I wouldn't want to be the reason why they can't do it anymore. All right. Well, at least I know people are aware of it. I just, there's just a huge conflict. Um, yeah, because this, this was already uh, code in Renton. So it was no impact at my local jurisdiction personally, but uh, we were already requiring full 13s and buildings like that. So, yeah, see, I thought that we'd be using for this scenario, like the podium style. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it impacts mostly. Yeah, exactly. So that's why there'd be a different section of the code that's in the building code that's used for those versus just, this is just a flat out statement um, that doesn't address those. <laughs> Oops. Would this be considered a more restrictive requirement that might trigger this change? Uh, this is a higher level of protection in, in these types of buildings, yes, so. So effectively it would change the building code. Yeah, this has already been adopted in the 2021 code. Which will go into effect in 2020, am I missing 24, <laughs> 23? I don't know. I can't think straight. Has the WAC modified this? Because before they allowed, you know, four plus two. We're reviewing the we're reviewing the 2021 code currently for new WACs and amendments to the existing building code. So these are the types of things that that we are bringing to the forefront to the council's attention because of the fiscal impacts. So this is an excellent example of what we're looking for, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and then my only other business was, I did, and maybe Ray can speak on this too, is I did ask at the building code tag yesterday, since it was confusing after the building code council meeting on when will they open it up for submissions for changes to the 2021 codes and, um, the answer I got was if I want to start submitting changes, which I have, um, go ahead and do it. Even though it's not official yet, they're shooting for April 1st through June. And the reason that I'm suggesting that people want to send them in now is that staff can actually start um, gathering them together. And then as a tag, we don't have to wait till the entire um, submittal process is done and we can start reviewing some of them um, during the April through June period. I'm hoping that's possible so we don't just get inundated with a hundred of these. So that was my only other comment is, is it's not official, but April 1st for submission of code changes. Yes, that's, that's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. But like like Ken said, he's he's already submitted a proposal, and we're just, we're going to start filing it. You may get a letter saying that you know we've accepted your proposal, 
or just something to keep um, because we have 60 days to act on a proposal. So you might get a letter that says we've accepted it. It's going to be this many days before we start taking action on it, just to uh, cover our RCW of our requirements when a proposal is submitted. No, uh, I I understand that. I just it just I don't know how everything got so condensed right now and that proposals aren't even starting until April. I think a lot of it came when we couldn't get the code books when they were backed up on getting our, because we're about two months behind schedule. Um, then I, you know, I would hope the building code council would have pushed the schedule back, but instead they've compressed it. It did. Um, I, in, in that, um, something that Micah had brought up in the, uh, in the council meeting. Um, we're still getting clarification on it, but um, part of the RCW states that we are not allowed to start the group two process until the group one process is complete. Um, what that means is complete. I think we're, we're trying to look into, is the tag done with work? Has the tag taken it to a hearing? I, I think that's what we're trying to shoot for is what is that, what is the definition of complete for group one so that we can move on to group two. So this, it, it, it is condensed, you're, you're correct, Ken. And, we're, we're all working to get that, to get, just get as much done as we can. That's all I had. All right, thank you. I had, I had uh, um, there was a question last week on um, WAC 909, 2112 and 2113 hoistway venting. Um, so uh, we, our amazing staff, Krista, I looked all over and she seemed to find it, <laughs> find it for me. What had happened in that hoistway venting for, venting for 909, 2112, and 2113 is that there was a proposal for all of 909. Um, they decided to go back um, to the model code and not use the proposal, but um, 2112 and 2113 were supposed to stay as a whack. So I struck it in the IFC and it's not supposed to be struck. So it'll be, I'm correcting it through a CR 105 process right now. Yeah. Um, so it will be, it will be, a, it is, it, it's struck, but it's not supposed to be. So I'm fixing that. That's correct. Yeah, we did talk about that yesterday at the building tag yesterday. Okay. So Perfect. So that everybody can, I'm going to put it back on the, I don't know if I struck it, but I'm going to put it back on the insert pages. So just as people are going through and printing them out, at least it's correct on that, on that end, it won't be on the ledge website right away, but um, uh, yeah, I'll, it'll be correct on the insert pages. So when people print them out, it's there. Okay. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> anything else for other business? Oh, this is Chris. I think I, may have got a fire alarm guy to join looks like he showed up um oh cool zach uh tuck with suppression systems so i was hoping that we'd have a little more insight from the fire alarm world with somebody here that's great and yeah, yeah I, actually i i'll speak on behalf of zach we talked on the phone um and uh i'm glad that he came on because i said i would do something and i haven't done it yet for, I, as far as a question that he had, um, we were going to review an email. I told him that we'd review an email today, but um, let me uh, let me get that email pulled up. Oh man! Thanks for the introduction, Chris. I appreciate it. Yeah, Zach. While um, Ray's pulling that up, do you want to just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and put you on the spot? Of the group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, Zachary Tuck. Um, I'm the president of Suppression Systems. Uh, we're a second generation um, special hazards, uh, you know, clean agent, halon, FM200, foam systems. Uh, we also do, uh, you know, fire alarm detection controls, but we, we, we typically gravitate to the um, kind of the more extreme industrial end of, of systems. So a lot of flame detection, uh, linear heat. Uh, we're doing a lot of gas. Uh, combustible gas detection, uh, toxic gas detection. So we're kind of get more into the unique um, type applications, but uh, primarily special hazards, fire protection. Uh, we've been in business here in Tacoma for 44 years. Very cool. Very cool. Well, we're glad, glad to have you back. Thank you. My apologies. I'm looking all over for that uh, email.
Chris, you sent it to me as well, didn't you? I did. Yeah, he had, he had contacted me about the um, those new certifications that are we're trying to push off, and it was kind of yes. ideal timing. Um, yes. So I'm going to touch on that. I'll, I'll touch on that while I'm trying to find this email. Um, we uh, we got the approval from the council to push those to change the effective dates. I'm working right now on the code language for for how we want that to be worded. But I'm also trying to uh, at the same time I am trying to uh, make the date that it falls on a, a, a practical date. Um, right now I'm looking at I might be able to I'm trying to get it to be effective on July one or it, the effective date of that would be July 1, because that's just our standard code proposal process. And that will put us 120 days out. Um, I, I was going to run it through like a normal process where we submit it before the third, it sits down and it gets published on the 17th, and that would make it July 15th as an effective date. So that's where we're sitting right now. Uh, as soon as I file it, it will be effective. Um, I'm hoping to maybe get it filed today, but I'm trying to make that effective date uh, a rational date other than like the second of a Wednesday or Tuesday or, or something is what I've been working on. So with that, how do we start the off cycle rule process to change the errors in that section? Such as, you know, it talks about kitchen suppression systems are on the engineered fire suppression and on the pre-engineered industrial fire extinguisher systems and just cleaning that language up. Did we talk about doing that in off cycle rulemaking, Ken? I think so, yeah, that was be because I, I hate to postpone this four months and then everybody's still gonna be confused. They're gonna be like, well, wait a minute, it's, it only talks about kitchen suppression systems, kitchen suppression systems. And we know that, um, you know, some of these are our clean aging systems that this is talking about. So it, it needs to get cleaned up before we start trying to enforce it because we it doesn't make any sense. The language just doesn't make any sense. Well, I guess we just we'd start that now and submit a proposal um, for off cycle breaking. So is that a tag proposal or can a individual such as myself do that? You can do it as an individual. Okay, so I will go through the, so do I do use the same code change form? I just quote this code. Yeah, just like just like the last code print proposal you okay. did. All right. Chris, I, Chris and Zach, I am so sorry. I cannot find that email. I don't, and I had it, I, I wonder if I tucked it away somewhere and, uh, and now I can't. Uh, that's okay. I mean, it was it was all the stuff we were talking about before, you know. Okay. With the engineered systems, who the heck is more certified than <laughs> like suppression systems? And it was just kind of how do we treat them, or how does that amendment try to treat them? But I think Ken's going to fix that when he submits something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. Well, that's the whole thing is that, is I would love if we could you know offline I can hit up a few of you guys and gals and try to throw out the proposal prior to me submitting it um because I, I don't want to wait till the tag sees it right and we um and if you want to can at any time I'll, i can put it on the agenda okay uh, our tag agenda okay Sounds thank good. you for that email uh, um let me share um, Okay, here's Zach. Zach, which part would you like to, would you, uh, is it this part right here that you'd like to talk about? I think we're kind of covering it, but. Yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, our concern was was with the engineered um, verbiage in there. Um, you know, it, it, System maintenance and testing on automatic fire extinguishing systems other than automatic sprinklers. I mean, is that 
I mean, we're covering a big gamut here. I mean, uh, what, what about water mist systems? I mean, is that is that is that extinguishing? Right. In our, in our mind, it is. It's an engineered extinguishing system. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I, I get that, Zach. And and, and Ray, if you want to, if if you're all right, Zach, forward me this email, and then I'll work with you on some code language on it. Um, because like like you just brought up a great point. At water mist and NFA 750 is allowed in kitchen extremes hoods now so we want to make sure it marries up correct can i'm yeah, it to I'm you willing right to help as much as i can okay yeah i'll reach out um, to you i'll um see if i can come up with some stuff that makes sense and, and i'd say yeah. our, our second biggest major concern here is is that you know we we, we call it a fire extinguishing system and now are we, we have to probably define the system right i mean is that is that the detection and controls that releases the system is that is that now part of the extinguishing system or is that still or is that part of um you know fire alarm is that right i mean do you see the overlap here because all, almost all of our extinguishing systems have some component of you know nfpa 72 for the detection and controls and that's one of the arguments that came up as well that that we already have our nice set requirements in place for for the alarm industry now at the state level or or the uh the other one that always escapes me. Um, but anyway, we have a couple different options there. And now how does this cross over into those requirements? And so that's also something that uh, I would imagine as part of this language change. This is uh, this is Mike Six. Um, I wrote a bunch of this um, and we talked, I remember talking about it at the tag back in the, back in the day. Part of the challenge is the state uh, sprinkler law um, prohibits the addition of any additional certifications, which which makes sense. Um, I think it's I think it's reasonable. So it's really the meshing, and it's really a nice um, feature to be able to pull you know pull all these industries and and people together to sift through a bunch of this. Um, ultimately, there's really no. Um, I don't think there's any any reason that we can't. Uh, manipulate this to, to fit everything that we need. I think ultimately we need a certification. We need people who are qualified to do what they're, what they're, they claim to be able to do. Um, but what the final product looks like, I don't, I don't think whether we use the, um, the nice set or, or whatever flavor of certification we, we get to. So that, that's my only comments related to that. I sent Ken and, uh, Tony, I think, and Ray, a little bit of modified uh, language um, to clean some of that up. So, I did receive that. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I that. saw it come in, but my email's frozen, so I can't open it up without disconnecting from the meeting. Hey, I'm the only one giving excuses today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with that, a um, <clears throat> couple things I just want to straighten out. So, Ken's going to be um, actively working on new language. Um, with Zach and others on the tag, and um, when ready, we'll we'll pr uh, produce it as an agenda item so we can go over it as the tag. And then, just for clarification, Zach, are you um, are you was the request to fill a role as a tag member? Is that what we're doing? Zach and I talked, and he's I, I'm. I'm speaking for him and i told him that you and i would talk about filling a role in tag as a tag member oh, in the large industry and we also got an email from meg that um said noticed that we had a vacant position in the architect spot and she would like to fill perfect it. that's so great you can each send me an email i i think i can use your email that you sent me meg um but zach if you'd send me an e just an email stating that you were interested in filing on the tag i'll put that in the file and we will and tony and i will talk and we'll put you on a spot on our on our tag group and okay. the same you got it. thank I think, you i think your email is sufficient for what okay. i what you i don't need. need a resume or anything nope no Perfect. thank you if they required a resume i wouldn't be here <laughs> 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 All right. Um, anyone else have other everybody, business? Everybody took a step back and Tony stood and still got voted in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I want to make sure I covered everything from the last meeting. There's a lot of questions. Oh, there was an, also a question on the, um, um, I think it was 909. Was it, uh, it was this section, someone was asking about our errata um, for, uh, 
the, the, the certification was put in a section that I don't think was supposed to be put into. I don't remember what code section it was, but it was in the model code. So the errata would go through the uh, ICC errata process, not the state um, errata process. So it was just a question about how we deal with an errata and, and that would be on the ICC level, not on the, on the R level. Okay, thank you for we that. Would, we would do an errata. Yeah, we would do an errata at the State Building Code Council if um, like now they have the ICC codes with the Washington State Amendments in it. We're getting erratas for those, but we're, we're, we're dealing with our state amendments, not the model code for erratas. Okay. Any other business? Okay. With that, meeting is adjourned. Welcome, Meg and Zach, and thank you everyone for showing up today. Appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Thank you.